Good morning, everybody who's watching this. This is a weekly show on a Friday. It's 7.30 in the UK right now, and it's 9.30 in Romania. Um, so I'm with Sebastian from RE7 Consulting. Uh, you can find them on Instagram, RE7, and on LinkedIn, Sebastian Bayer. Uh, my name is Harry Roper. Uh, I run an agency called Imaginary Space. Um, you can find me on YouTube under Harry Roper, and you can also find me on LinkedIn, Harry Roper, as well. Um, we usually come to this show with a question, um, and uh, just talk around that topic for 30 minutes or a little bit more uh, or less um, and kind of go from there. Now, Sebastian's already told me that he doesn't have a question or it has a couple I, of days. I, 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 have, I, I have some questions, but um, <laughs> I was like, Harry, first you and then, then let's see where we go from there. <laughs> so I, I was I was doing some research uh, this morning in bed when I was um, looking up mine and I thought this was quite a good one. The, Theme that I was looking at was leadership, um, considering that we both are the leaders of our agencies. Mm -hmm. And um, one of the things was, uh, which I really liked, a question I saw was, uh, what was, what is or has been the biggest risk you've taken and, and why? Okay. And, and did it pay off? Biggest risk. Nice question. Um, I think the biggest risk was for me when I quit at Telecom. Um, that's the first things that come to my mind, you know. Um, Why don't you tell the, the audience a little brief? Yeah, I grew up. I grew brief up about in, your, um, your Telecom. How do you say? I, I grew up in a small, a small village. Um, six, eight hundred inhabitants. I'm not really sure. You can Google Schmalno, Schmalno in Germany. <laughs> It's quite small. Um, yeah, nobody in my family was an entrepreneur. What I've heard so far, my my um, uncle from my grandma, so I don't know, 80 years, 90 years ago was like kind of an entrepreneur. But in my family, there was nobody. My, my dad worked as a civil servant for Deutsche Telekom at this time because Telekom was first um, Post, German Post, so belongs to the state. Also, my mom has a job since she's working there since 40 years now or 30 years. Yeah, quite some time. Didn't change the job. So um, when I finished school, um, I started, oh, what should I do? So I did, I wanted first to go to the military. I was really fascinated. Um, but my parents were already like, no, you can't do this, dangerous and so on. And my dad, of course, um, um, motivated me to um, apply at Deutsche Telekom for um, a training. So we have mm. this called a term in Germany, Ausbildung, where you have to make a training for three years. Mm -hmm. And because I was all the time on the computer, <laughs> he thought it's a good idea. Hey, just do a training. And uh, the training in Deutsche Telekom was... Um, because it's a big corporation. So there are not so many big corporations in the next town in Fulda where I was living. So it was a great opportunity and the training is really had a good reputation that it's really good, you learn a lot and so on. Mm -hmm. So I did it. Luckily they took me even with my bad grades. <laughs> and that's, that's how I started at Telecom in 2006. Um, I shortened my training for two and a half years after that worked for eight or nine months in the call center because they have like policy you have to go in the call center sell some mm. iphones you know nice. and then i was going to be um, in data privacy security and worked there for um almost 10 years until 2018 when i decided coming back to your question the first risk going to romania so Funny, funny thing is two, two days, no, was it yesterday? No, two days ago, it has been six years when I just packed all my things, my couch in my trunk, in my car, and drove 17 hours to Romania. Of course, I had one stop, but still I drove then by myself with my 
old car to Romania. So I've been six years now in Romania. And I worked a bit from there for telecom still, you know, but I was between Romania and Germany. And then at one point they did some relocation, as you know, big, big corporations. So it, the thing was, hey, you should go to Darmstadt, which is close to Frankfurt. It's around 150 kilometers. And I was already mainly in Romania. So I was like, no, that, I'm not doing this. And of course, of the pressure of my family, all the friends, because they also not entrepreneurs, they were like, ah, you should stay at Telecom, they pay good salary, you mm. have great opportunities. And I had already a good job and I had good opportunities to get like, um, yeah, you to, to step on to bigger steps in their in the career, you know, and but it wasn't for me like an opportunity or I saw it not as an opportunity. I, I said, I want to do here in Romania, my own thing. And that's what I would say was my biggest step. Um, quitting telecom. So first I did, I did like, um, because big corporations offer you uh, a year unpaid vacation. So I was able mm -hmm. to do this for two years even. And um, so 2020 last year, finally, I said, okay, I'm not coming back. Um, and that was the biggest risk, I would say. And to come to the other part of your question, did it pay off? Um, yeah. I, I, I say yes, because um, I, I like it here in, in, in Bucharest, in Romania. Uh, sometimes the weather is a bit too hot, but in general, it's really cool here. Um, I have my agency here running. I have possibilities where I can develop myself. All these possibilities I wouldn't have had at Telecom. Mm. So because mm. you are always in a system, you are only one part of it, and you are not fully in decision. And I've I've worked with lots of managers in this cop and in, in Deutsche Telekom, and I, I guess in other corporations it's the same. They are stressed. They have lots of calls, lots of meetings, and it's like you are in a in a wheel. From my point of view, like you want to get uh, promoted, you have to lick others asses and so on. And yeah, sure. When you want to be innovative, then somebody puts you down. And for example, I, I had also some ideas in this. Um, they have like an idea management where you could bring in ideas and had some ideas where I think mm. they had potential. But um, the people that reviewed them, they weren't so innovative. So you know. And I was by myself, fuck it, I will do my own thing. And I, I decide what ideas I want to do and which ideas I don't want to do. And I would say, yes, it paid off. Good. Okay, nice, nice. So, so how if anybody's... <laughs> Well, I was just going to say, so if anybody's, ah. working, if anybody's working in corporate and have the same sort of feelings as you, whether they feel like it's not fulfilling or something like that, then to take the risk and take some time off, which is sounded what like you did to explore whether it was a good option might be a, a good idea if they can take a sabbatical or something like that. Yeah, yeah, that, that would be a good idea like to have a sabbatical for one year and see if it, it mm -hmm. works. Of course, put some money aside, at least three monthly salaries to have on mm -hmm. the site because normally it doesn't skyrocket at the beginning. So you need to put in some work, but sure. have, a, have a clear plan what you want to do. Mm -hmm. and then then it's gonna work out sure um so uh big risks um similar to you sebastian really uh although um my family are quite entrepreneurial so my grandfather ran a ran his own company and mm -hmm. um my other grandfather ran his own company as well uh, not their their children, interestingly, just the just the grandparents. Mm -hmm. um, but uh, I always kind of knew that um, that was something that I wanted to to do at some point. Um, me personally, I'd always led teams online for making like video games as a kid. I'd band together a few people and we would make a game for a couple of months and then we'd all give up <laughs> and move on to the next idea because that's what you do when you're young. You don't really stick to things. Um, 
but I was working uh, a really good application development agency in London and at that application development agency um, some uh, I would just say I, I, I was like poorly I'd say there was a couple of things that went that went wrong in the application development agency and um, because of that uh, we decided that I should go on a growth pl program so for a year they were going to teach me how to program properly um, I was going to be on a reduced wage whilst they did that and it was really kind of them to give me that like learning opportunity um, but also I could see the path that I was going to go down and it was going to be a year of head down just learning um, doing a career that I wasn't so hot on so uh, I took the risk of leaving that agency as good as it was they were working with some very big clients and I was learning so much and instead I came back to my home um, county Devon in the southwest of England which is mm -hmm. very rural like your small village in in Germany and be because of that um, I started working at a hotel um, I was working at the hotel for a while and uh, one day a customer was very rude to me yeah. and I took, I took the towel, I did the classic thing you see on TV and movies, I went, oh fuck this, threw the, threw the towel down I said I'm not working for this place ever again, I'm going to work for myself and that was the start of how my agency began. Um, although it wasn't an agency to begin with, it was just me making websites and stuff and then it's developed to where it is now. But yeah, I think um, when you're as young as I was and like leaving like a, a, a career prospect or like a career path that you could go down, um, yeah, like then, then moving into like um, trying to define your own career, it's a little bit scary because, you know, you don't know what you're doing at the end of the day. Yeah. How it's a lot of self-learning. I was maybe 19 or 20 when I returned. Oh, wow. Well, yeah. So quite, quite young, quite young. Um, yeah. for those of you, for those of you who don't know who are watching, I'm 24 now. So it's been a good three, four years of learning. And I would say I'm not even there yet, but uh, it does take a while to develop these things. And I think like the 10 years of experience that you got at Telecom probably helped, right, Sebastian, with like talking to people and stuff like that. Ah, for sure. For, I had some I had some good men, men, mentors there, for example, at Telecom. Um, one of my members was the guy that introduced the um, electronic personal file for 250,000 employees. So you have to imagine, so every employee at telecom can look now in their personal file digitally and you have to imagine they digitalize a personal file one personal file can be from 50 pages to 300 pages so 250,000 of these files they digitalized that's crazy so i was also i was also part of this and um, also when they, for example, had like um, automatization, when there was coming automatization. So he worked together with Adobe on a solution. He won even price at Adobe. So he was there at the headquarter in the US. And I had a lot, there are lots of stories that I can tell you that that helped me to grow, to learn. Mm -hmm. Also, when you have some meetings and so on, how to structure things. Yeah. And, there's a lot about as uh, i don't know if i sh told you but i've done a lot of job during my entire time because um, my dad sent me i don't know if i was 14 first time to do a vacation job so he sent mm. me to our neighbors who has um like a laundry but a big laundry for lufthansa and so on on hotels so that's how i started and then another year i worked like in a fabric with iron you know, yeah. to, to yeah. iron. Then I was working in construction. I was doing one practical year at police. So I've I've seen lots of places. I, I'm I, I, could, I could I could make uh, the list longer. I have several <laughs> jobs that I've done, and um, all these jobs would um, have teach teach you something. Mm -hmm. um, either something you don't want to do ever in your life. So it was for the first job like this, where I was like, no, I don't want to do this. <laughs> um, 
but also um, how how companies work and so mm -hmm. on. And I think this is also interesting, not only to to learn the theory, but also in practice to see how it's working and what is your part. You know, I wanted to jump on your point there as well. I think that the um, skills that you learn when it comes to how to present yourself in a meeting, how to write an invoice, how to write a proposal. The things that I got exposed to at that agency were the reason that I was able to start mine because I kind of knew the procedure of how to look professional. Um, and I think if I was to talk to any kid or, or young adult who's just gone from being 18, 19, they're going into their early 20s. If you can get one year's experience at a corporate company where you have exposure to uh, invoice writing, booking meetings, doing calls, uh, all these core things that really re help you um, present yourself professionally, then I feel like those skills that I, I learned at that agency, and I'm sure you learned to telecom are like invaluable and are the reason that you were able to talk to clients in your agency today so professionally because you knew how to present yourself. Yes, yes, I agree. For example, especially when we work with big corporations, I'm not saying I don't know exactly how they work, but I have an idea how they work. Mm -hmm. And then they take 60 days to pay your an invoice. And my employees that have worked at a corporation, they were like, what does that take them so long? And after 60 days, of course they don't pay. This is not, <laughs> they need yeah, a few days, they need even a few days longer, which is something that I know already. So I'm not worried. Um, but um, my employees that haven't worked in a big corporation, they may be feared or they don't understand and mm. they, they, they don't know what's behind, they don't know how big it is. For example, at Telecom, I was working in a division like the HR department of, of a corporation, but the HR department of, a, of Telecom, these are 2,000 people. So just for Germany, just for Germany at this time. Mm -mm. So um, these are dimensions that you um, that you can't understand if you haven't worked in these dimensions. Sure. It's, it, it's a total different thing if you work in a small company or in a big company and where lots of people are working, there are lots of processes and things mm -hmm. that can go wrong and you also need to know how, how they think. So they only see their own small island normally. <laughs> so if you want something, um, specific or individual this is really hard to get not only with your company but also for example when you get like a mobile phone contract or something um this helps mm. in, in general or also with hotels and things like this mm. what's um so moving on from from that uh we have 15 minutes left um what is your question sebastian Oh my God. <laughs> <laughs> no pressure. I'm, I'm, I'm trying to think, but um, I think what I mentioned with the, with the mentor, um, did you have a mentor in your life? And if so, what did you learn from them or from him or her, you know? Sure. Um, Yeah, I think because my agency is so on my mind at the moment, um, probably I would I would think back to my old boss who was there, mm -hmm. the, the head guy, Akshay, um, who really helped me understand quite quickly how to be more professional at work and how to be more, um, I guess, uh, thorough and confident in yourself. Yeah. Um, especially with calls because his favorite thing to do when I first joined and I was so like, I couldn't believe it was he would just like throw me on a call. He'd be like, oh, we're talking to this massive client from eBay. Um, we're about to talk to their head of head of products or whatever. Um, Harry, sit down in the call with them and just sit sit there and say hello and chat. And I was like, fuck me. OK, uh, and it really I think it really ha like some people would really crumble under that. But my my general personality, I've really thrived off of that. And even though I didn't do much talking, I would just say hello at the beginning and goodbye at the end. Um, it, it really helped. And he was never shy to hide me as a, as a junior or 
um, push me away from from those sort of responsibilities. Um, mm -hmm. And I think it really it really leveled me up. And as well as that exposure, the exposure he gave me to pretty much everything inside the company. So uh, when they wrote an invoice, he would he would let me look for it and see the prices that were going through and and how much was was being sent um, to when he was doing sales calls. Sometimes I would listen in, um, but I quickly understood how he would sell where it would just be complete honesty about the product that they wanted made. And uh, to be honest, if they were like, saying like ideas that didn't really work or whatever he'd be very upfront with them about that mm -hmm. and say you know this this won't work because of that and i think that's why he won a lot of jobs because of his like sheer honesty and wanting to help the client but also like being himself so not being shy when it comes to yeah. telling yeah. them like this won't work uh so that's my mentor actually if you're watching the video shout out to you man nice nice um and you Sabeb, Ashton? Yeah, during during my my path, life path or career path, I had to, I had different mentors. The one that I mentioned at Telecom, even at the police, um, the boss of the police department was kind of a mentor, you know. In in every job, I had kind of like this this person um, that gave you some advices and helped you. For example, also at Telecom, my working colleague that is now retired, Gerd from, from, from Hamburg. Um, he was also a great mentor. Um, he, he had, um, how do I say, he, he was an expert. He was, or is still an expert in his field in data privacy. Mm -hmm. You have to imagine he is like um, my, my height, a bit higher even, long hair, like here. He is um, now in his 60s already, but he was at this time in the 50s long hair classes so he is like he likes rock music he plays also like um the, the ba bass or how do you say it? <laughs> i could i could picture him yeah. already <laughs> yeah and he had yeah. this um mainly he had he was wearing this white fruit of loop t-shirt <laughs> and just his jeans and um he's a bit like bigger you know? yeah, yeah, yeah yeah big belly and when you've seen him you would say oh who is this and then when he walked in the telecom um, all these guys in their suits and so on. He was walking there, and then he was <laughs> meeting up. He was meeting up with the um, board, uh, with the HR board member, sure. <laughs> subtle, but... subtle burger, subtle burger at this time. So um, I'm not saying he was there with his blue T-shirt, but he had that maybe a stack coat. But in general, you couldn't see how much knowledge he had. He was sitting like there with the boss of HR from Deutsche Telekom worldwide. Wow. and was consulting him so this was for me always like uh, you don't have to plan in because he, he had so much knowledge he knew every little detail of every software that we were using in hr and he had good connections he knew this person there he knew this person there so when they had to be tied some strings or to find some solution he was like oh give me a minute and then he was calling them and <laughs> this Hamburg, very this nice. said Moin, moin, and uh, solving things. You know, in Hamburg they say instead of Guten Morgen, they say moin. <laughs> and um, yeah, he, he, he teached me a lot. And um, he had also some some genius ideas how, mm. how to sort things out or how to solve things. And I'm really grateful I worked with him five or six years, I think, together. And I'm still in contact with him. Now he's focused mainly on um, the music um, because he retired, you know, nice. and is living living a good life. But um, yeah, there are so funny funny stories that he was smoking all the time. Yeah, one <laughs> one package per day. So for, yeah, yeah, for him it was networking because he he said you you do best networking when you smoke, and he was going out smoking and then. Um, talking to other people and then telling me the news that he got from them <laughs> that you wouldn't find in the intranet or that nobody would tell you that would be the news that um, will come out in maybe a few weeks, you know, that somebody will retire or somebody will stop or it will be created a new division. And he knew this always uh, in advance because he was going to smoking breaks and getting the news, you know. <laughs> nice, nice. Yeah.
that was for example um, and, uh, one one mem mentor that I that I had. And, and what, um, what was his yeah. name, Seb? A uh, Gerd. Shout, Gerd. Gerd. Shout him out, man. Nice. nice. What a lovely way to sort of finish up the show. Really nice. Really nice. Yeah, yeah. Um, I don't know how we do it in the next um, season, but let's let's see with the question. Maybe we we get a guest the next time. Yes, I think that's a great idea. Uh, you're taking a we're taking a taking a short break now because you were off for two weeks. So yeah, uh, guys, if you want to carry on following Sebastian. You can follow him on RE7 Consulting, Romania, uh, on Instagram and Sebastian Bayer on LinkedIn. And you can follow me on LinkedIn, Harry Roper, and also have a YouTube vlog, Harry Roper, as well. Um, but apart from that, thanks for joining. If you have any questions that you feel like we could answer or talk about, put them in the comments. And it, yeah, if you'd like to join us up here as well, we're quite open to talking to new people. So just tell us in the comments as well and we can sort that out. But uh, until next time, see you in the next one, Sebastian. Have a nice holiday. Yes, thank you, Harry. Thanks a lot. It was a great show. And um, yeah, as Harry said, um, if not, write us the questions also on LinkedIn. And we are happy to discuss them here. Have a nice day. Bye.